Hello, here we are. Welcome to season three of English Sound Building. I hope that you're well and that you've been having fun with your language learning over the last couple of months. This is one of my favourite times of year. It's a new academic year here in the UK, which always brings me a burst of energy. And I've spent the summer concentrating more on my other linguistic love, which is teaching academic and professional writing. So I'm really excited about getting back into pronunciation with you now. If you're new here, you need to know that I'm Tamsin and that English Sound Building is the advanced pronunciation podcast where you do the work to build muscle, muscle memory and master new sounds. And as always, remember that successful communication is possible in any one of the thousands of global English accents. There is no ideal and we're here to play with sound and think about the sounds we make and listen to. If you find it useful to read as you listen, you can find a script for this podcast on my Patreon page. That's www.patreon.com slash English Brick by Brick. The link's in the episode notes. Everything is free on there. Just scroll down on the main page and you'll find the script. I am a one person team writing, recording and editing these in my free time, though. So if you like what I do and you are able to support me, please do. I love hearing from you too, so please leave me a comment on Patreon or get in touch via Instagram or Facebook. Although I'm obviously just starting to record season three, I'm actually putting together episodes for season four and even five at the moment, so if you'd like to make sure I cover a particular sound or combination of sounds, please tell me. Okay, let's get to work. So this week's workout is a real classic in terms of English pronunciation, and it's the contrast between the short vowel and the long vowel e. This is a contrast which doesn't exist in many languages and which, like all short long vowel contrasts, can make a difference to your ability to communicate clearly. After schwa, they're also the most commonly used vowel sounds in English, so they are ones you'll use a lot. They're both closed front vowels, but there are small differences in mouth position between them. I tend to find that although my learners can make a sound very similar to it or e, the difference in length between the two is not exaggerated enough. And this is where really focusing on exactly what's happening inside the mouth for the two sounds can help. We're going to do this in some depth this week. So let's start by practicing that short i sound. And we'll do this both by repeating the word it and also just by repeating the sound itself, i. Let's do them three times each to start off with it, it. It, i, i, i. Now think about the position of your tongue in your mouth, first of all. I, i, i. One of the things I notice is that the, the, um, the mid to the back section of my tongue is raised up towards the top of my mouth. It's not so close it's almost touching, but it's also not lying down against the back of my mouth either. And I feel that particularly um, in the middle and in the back of my tongue. I can also feel the sides of my tongue pressing against the upper back teeth. It's not a strong pressure, but it is a light pressure. I, 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 I. Notice how your tongue feels in your mouth for that one. It's also interesting to play around with raising or lowering the tongue in your mouth, and you'll hear how the sound differs. If we put it too high, there isn't another sound in English which sounds like this, but you can hear how the quality of the sound changes. I, 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 I. Um, and if we put it too low, it starts to open up into something more like a schwa uh. So, i, i, i to uh, uh, uh. Next, I'd like you to think about your lips. So, to make the i sound, mine are slightly wide and tensed as if at the beginning of a smile, but they're not fully smiling. And I can make the i sound without widening in my lips at all. So, the lips aren't essential, but they do tend to widen naturally for this sound. I, I, I. And then finally, I'd like you to think about your vocal cords and specifically how long you're vibrating them for. The sound should be as short as you can make it. You might find it useful to put your fingers against your throat or perhaps even better against your diaphragm to feel the muscles working and then relaxing. I, 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 I. Well done. So let's practice a few common words with the I sound. And there are so many to choose from here. It really is a common sound. I've just gone with 12 for you today. Listen and repeat. Big. Chicken. Finish. Fish. His. 
quickly. River. This. Ticket. Tourist. Trip. Which. Well done. And we're going to do a couple of sentences with those words. So I will read the sentences first slowly for you to grasp the words. I'll then read them at a more natural pace. Pause for you to repeat as close to that pace as you can manage. Then I'll read them again at a more natural pace and pause for you to repeat one more time. We'll start with sentence one. Bill bit a big bit of chicken, but didn't finish the fish. Bill bit a big bit of chicken, but didn't finish the fish. Bill bit a big bit of chicken, but didn't finish the fish. And sentence two, the tourist quickly needs a ticket for his river trip. The tourist quickly needs a ticket for his river trip. The tourist quickly needs a ticket for his river trip. Well done. Let's move on then to the long E sound. And this time we'll say eat, 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 e, e, e. And what do you notice about your tongue position this time? E, e, e. Mine is even higher in my mouth, closer to my hard palate, and I notice a firmer tension in its muscles, as well as more pressure on my upper back teeth. E, 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 e. Have a play again around lowering or raising the tongue and notice how the sound changes. Now think about your lips. So to make the E sound, mine widen more into a full smile. And they really have to to make this sound. I can't make the sound if I don't widen into that full smile. Listen to what happens if I try. E and then finally, think about your vocal cords. You should feel that prolonged vibration in your throat this time. So it's not a short tap anymore. It's a longer vibration. Or if you touch your diaphragm, you may feel the muscle pushing and relaxing more slowly between sounds. E, E, E. So all three of those things are more exaggerated in some way than they are to make the sound and I think that exaggeration is often what my learners struggle with they feel it's too much that they're pushing the sound too far or too hard and they're really not so you need to exaggerate this one in English to really get the contrast between the short and the long sound so we'll read again just 12 common words with that e sound um, and again so many to choose from this week listen and repeat b Cheese, coffee, easy, email, he, machine, me, need, please, tea, three, well done. And again, just two sentences with those uh, with those words. The first one is really short. So sentence number one, email me, please. Email me, please. Email me, please. And sentence two, he needs three cheap tea and coffee machines. He needs three cheap tea and coffee machines. He needs three cheap tea and coffee machines. Great job. So finally, we're going to practice contrasting the sounds and we'll move on to look at some minimal pairs and sentences. Firstly, just the sounds themselves. I, e. We're going to start off by really exaggerating that difference in length even further than we need to and noticing the movement of your tongue and your lips between the two sounds. I, e. E, I, e. And now we'll do it at a more natural difference in length. I, e, I, e, I, 
E. Having done that, we'll practice with some minimal pairs. Again, there are so many of these to choose from this week. I haven't been able to put them all in. We'd have been here for half an hour. I'll put more in the Patreon script if you want to practice more yourselves. We're working alphabetically this week and starting with six where we will read both in the pair. Listen and repeat. Bin, bean. Bit, beat. Chick, cheek. Chip, cheap. Dip, deep. Fit, feet. Well done. For the next six, I'm going to read the I word and I'd like you to read both. We'll do the first one together as an example. Is. So you should have read is ease. And again, as often with these minimal pairs, we are getting into some slightly higher level vocabulary here. So if you need to get your dictionary out, check that script on the Patreon, then please do that. Let's do the rest in this group. So again, I'm reading the I, you need to read both. Knit. Lick. List. Piss. Rich. Now listen to and repeat both and see how you did. Is ease. Knit neat. Lick leak. List least. Piss peace. Rich reach. And for the final six, I'm going to read the E word. And again, I'd like you to say both. Again, we'll do the first one together as an example. Read. So you should have read either read, rid, or if you did it the other way around, rid, read, absolutely fine as well. Let's do the next five. Sheep. Seat. Sleek. Teen. Weak. And finally, listen to and repeat both and see how you did. Read, rid. Sheep, ship. Seat, sit. Sleek, slick. Teen, tin. Weak, wick. Brilliant. So we're going to move on to a few sentences with those minimal pairs. And it's been quite a long workout this week, so we won't do too many. As always, it's a fantastic idea for you to see if you can think of more for yourself. The first one is the title of the podcast this week. It's an idiom meaning very inexpensive. Cheap as chips. Cheap as chips. The second, I'll read it a bit more slowly the first time this time. Um, sit on the seat and knit neatly. Sit on the seat and knit neatly. Sit on the seat and knit neatly. The third, the cheeky chick dipped her feet in deep. The cheeky chick dipped her feet in deep. The cheeky chick dipped her feet in deep.
And the final one is also an idiom, meaning very easy. It's a more vulgar take on a piece of cake. Piece of piss. Piece of piss. Learning pronunciation? It's a piece of piss with English sound building. Seriously, these two sounds are far from a piece of piss, but I hope this workout has helped you notice and feel the contrast a bit more easily. As always, practice as often as possible to build muscle and muscle memory. If you find it easy, speed the podcast up, and if you need more time, slow it down. If you're new here and you'd like to follow me on social media, come find me on Instagram or Facebook at English Brick by Brick. I'm not super active on there at the moment, but there are loads of old posts you can look back over. You'll also find me on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash English Brick by Brick. Everything is free at the moment, but thanks so much to those of you who are supporting me there. So we'll be back next week, coming back to this short I sound and also circling back to the schwa a sound, talking about weak forms of grammar words in sentence level pronunciation. It's a great one for getting the rhythm of the language. Enjoy sound building and I'll see you then. Bye.